Hello, everyone. As Daniel was saying, my name is Paul. Um, and I'm, I'm here today to remind you about uh, an SDK which seems to float in an unknown at the moment. So Apple has been providing um, cloud services for developers for a while. And it's fair to say that they had their problems. Uh, <laughs> But I think the tide has changed in, in 2014 when at WWDC they announced CloudKit, which is this new framework that allows developers to save user data and have access to Apple servers. And you do that by including CloudKit in your app and you get access to a, um, a container or a range of containers which are specific to your developer account. So an app can have access to multiple, multiple containers um, and also all your apps have access to the same containers. So what that means is containers are shared between between apps. So a container, what it is, uh, it has a public and a private database. Um, in fact, it has a private database for each single user you have for your app. Um, a user only has access to the public database and her own um, private database. Um, a database has inside zones, so it comes by default with a default zone, and you can create as many zones as you like. And zones are where you spin your records, if you like, or you save your records. Um, also, they are the entity that provides atomicity on, on all, all these systems. So it's not cool to mix records if they belong to different zones. <laughs> and also, it's not cool to reference records across zones. So they provide this, um, this nice SDK. It's very easy to get a container. And you can get access to a private and a, a public uh, cloud database. And then they provide something called a convenience API, which is a high level, a synchronous set of operations for CRUD on records. Um, one tip here is create a developer account um, specific for this and use it to log in into your um, iCloud inside your simulator. That means that you can go to something that we have access to called CloudKit dashboard and you can see your private records. Otherwise, you won't be able to see private records from other users. So one of the main reasons why developers wouldn't want to use this is because it was tied to the Apple platform. So last year, Apple released something called CloudKit.js. And if you don't know what JS stands for, um, it's JavaScript. Um, it's this language that is quite popular with hipsters these days. And uh, it, had, it had five new uh, frameworks coming out just from the moment I started this talk. <laughs> so um, I encourage you to download uh, the project that Apple provides. It's really good, and it allows you to um, to run the sample code straight into your browser, and it, it literally gives you a result there. And remember, because you use iCloud authentication, you also get the two-step verification for login by default. Why would you use CloudKit? Ease of, ease of integration, security and privacy, authentication, um, and not, not least, <laughs> peace of mind. So you probably saw the announcement from PaaS yesterday. Uh, they're going out of business because Facebook bought them, so nothing is really free. Um, so two things on my wish list, complete ubiquity. Uh, that means I would like to see a REST API for other platforms and server-side scripting. One last thing, um, you as a developer are um, in charge of hosting costs for the public stuff. Uh, users are for their own uh, thing. Um, one new business model that you can get from here is um, on a normal app that charges up front, the customer lifetime value changes, uh, decreases as, you, as the user uses the app, not in the cloud kit. Um, thank you, and bang on time. Thank you.